every material object is made up of atoms. Atoms are required to have a universe that has simple and complex structures like galaxies, stars, planets, molecules, water and all living things that we know of. That's why atoms are known as the building blocks of material objects. Now, have you ever wondered how and where the atoms are formed? Which systems are needed for the atoms to come into being? Through which processes different atoms are formed? Let's see the answers together. In the beginning, the hot and dense state of the universe was so hot that no stable atoms could form. In about three minutes after the Big Bang started, most of the helium and deuterium in the universe were produced through a process known as the Big Bang nucleosynthesis. By the way, you might already know that a single proton is actually an ionized or without electron form of hydrogen atom. However, due to high temperatures, these atomic nuclei could not capture electrons and form complete form of atoms. The matter existed mainly in the form of plasma, a gas of positively charged ions and electrons. It took the universe about 380,000 years to cool down enough for the atoms with bound electrons to form. Until this point, the only atoms that existed were hydrogen, helium and some of their isotopes. Positively charged protons repel each other with electromagnetic force and it is extremely difficult to bring two or more of them close enough to each other to form heavier atomic nuclei. Heavier atomic nuclei can be formed in the core of stars through a process known as stellar nucleosynthesis. However, it took the universe about 400 million years to form its first stars. When two or more protons are squeezed by the extremely high pressures in the cores of stars, they are brought close and bound to each other by this strong nuclear force. Strong nuclear force is the strongest of the four fundamental forces, but with a range up to a few femtometers, where one femtometer is 10 to minus 15 meters. It is the strong force that binds the quarks to form protons and neutrons. It is also the strong force that holds the protons and neutrons together in the nuclei of the atoms. But for the strong force to be able to bind positively charged protons to form a nucleus, the protons need to be brought extremely close to each other, to a separation of about one femtometer for a medium-sized nucleus. This is what happens in the nuclear fusion in the core of stars. In other words, protons are brought close by the nuclear fusion reactions in the core of stars, where they are bound to each other by this strong force to form stable, heavier atomic nuclei. Elements, from carbon up to iron, are formed in this way in the core of stars. Elements heavier than iron are produced with slow neutron capture known as S-process in large stars where heavier elements up to lead and bismuth are produced. Now, what about even heavier elements beyond lead and bismuth? Well, this is where things get a little complicated. When the core of a star gets dominated by iron, the core no longer produces energy through nuclear fusion. This is where the death process of a star begins. When the most massive stars die in a rare supernova explosion, the elements produced in their cores are thrown away in all directions. Some of these elements collide with each other with extremely high speeds and fuse into even heavier elements. Most of the remaining heavier elements in the periodic table are produced in these runaway fusion reactions. The supernova explosions of massive stars are not the only source of the heavy elements. There is another interesting source, merging neutron stars. Neutron star mergers are the most catastrophic events in the universe after merging black holes. When two neutron stars collide, heavy elements, like strontium, are formed through rapid neutron capturing process, or R process. The R process is so rapid that more than 10 to the power of 22 neutrons flow through an area of 1 square centimeter. Another way that heavy elements could form is that when neutrons undergo beta decay, which turns neutrons into protons, each emitting one electron and one antineutrino. With this mechanism, even heavy elements can be produced from individual neutrons within less than a second. There are naturally existing elements on Earth and synthetic, or human-made elements. These synthetic elements, also known as transuranium or transuranic elements, probably exist elsewhere in our universe. However, due to their unstable nature and half-life periods shorter than the age of the Earth, they no longer naturally exist on Earth. Some of the heavy elements can be produced through different processes. For example, elements like lead are formed in large stars through S process, but they are also largely formed as a result of decaying of heavier elements. All the atoms in the periodic table can be formed through the aforementioned processes, except three. They are not the heaviest, but are the lightest atoms after helium. They are lithium, beryllium and boron, which are elements number 3, number 4 and number 5 in the periodic table. 
These elements cannot be formed by fusing a hydrogen to helium or fusing two heliums which produce unstable elements lithium-5 and beryllium-8, respectively. Then, how are they formed? The answer is cosmic ray spallation, also known as X-process. When heavy elements are bombarded by cosmic rays, they are broken and split into lighter atoms. Cosmic rays are highly energetic charged particles, mainly protons, which travel at nearly the speed of light. When they hit the nucleus of an element, they split it into lighter nuclei, resulting in formation of lighter atoms. This is how five stable isotopes of lithium, beryllium and boron can be formed. In conclusion, formation of atoms requires processes with extreme conditions that could bring positively charged protons very close to each other. The first process is the Big Bang nucleosynthesis, which formed hydrogen, helium and some of their isotopes. The second process is stellar nucleosynthesis, where elements from carbon up to iron are formed through nuclear fusion reactions in the core of stars. Elements up to lead and bismuth also can be formed in massive stars by slow neutron capture or S process. The third process is known as supernova nucleosynthesis, where heavy elements are formed in runaway collisions and fusion of lighter elements after supernova explosion of massive stars. The fourth process is the catastrophic merging of neutron stars, which also produces heavy elements like strontium through rapid neutron capture, or R process. The fifth way is the decaying of heavier nuclei, which results in formation of lighter nuclei. The sixth process is known as cosmic ray spallation, which produces lithium, beryllium, boron and their stable isotopes. This happens when cosmic rays hit and split heavier atomic nuclei into two or more lighter nuclei. Which nucleosynthesis process do you think is the most interesting? Please let us know under comments. If you liked this video, then like, share and subscribe for more videos. Take care and see you in the next video.